Hi, it's Essa, and today we're going to be making this Japanese-inspired lunch bag. So it looks just like this. It's I'm calling it the flower petal lunch bag because this kind of looks like flower petals, right? And so you can take two fabrics, right? You can doesn't have to be um, like pink. You can use, of course, any fabrics that you want. So this is one. This is the first one I designed. Um, so this is a drawstring. Opens like this and has a nice handle. And in the tutorial, we're gonna see how to make this one. So this is a nice flower print. And the drawstring opens up and there's plenty of space to put like a lunch box, like a water bottle and like an apple on the side and like a little small tub for like pickled, uh, pickled vegetables or whatever you like to eat. So this is it. This lunch bag is inspired by Japan and the Japanese culture. So I really like how they take the time to, um, like, it's really important to prepare the meal and to, like, eat it and sit down and enjoy it instead of just scarfing down food just for, like, no reason because you have no time. Like, you should always take the time to eat, and that's really important food. So having, a, like, a nice fancy lunch bag and a lunch box will help you enjoy food and um, stop overeating, right? Also, since food is like a very important part of life, right? Obviously, if you don't eat food, you're gonna like just die, right? So, you should really take the time. Since it's important, you want to be feeding yourself good, healthy food, right? So, you want to have be in a happy mood. In order to happy mood, you look at these beautiful flowers, right? I'm just gonna explain the pattern of it. Okay, so this is for the strap, 16.5 inches by 8 inches. What you want is a big, long rectangle like this. And what we're gonna do is fold this up a lot. Right, and then this would be the strap, so it'll be more strong. Then you have the two sides of like the house. So like there's this box, eight and a half inches by nine inches. And this the side of the one, six by eight and a half. And this rooftop here is five inches. You just get the midpoint here to figure out where the pointy is, or else if it's too much on the side, so you just fold this part in half, right? And then of course here's the bottom, the base right there. And each piece you want to cut two of the fabric plus two of the lining, except for the strap. And the fabric. So it's just pretty much like constructing. See, look, we construct a box. And then we have the flower petals that stick out, right? So this looks like that. So the fabric I'm going to be using is this nice happy flower print. It's great for spring, look. So happy. Okay, and then the lining, I'm going to just do a uh, solid pink. I recommend, like, if you want both, pattern like inside lining and outside it might be too much so try to pick like a solid color and then uh, like a, pla uh, a fancier more print also you're gonna need two shoelaces I like to have it really long because then it has a cool um, nice um, nice look and also we're gonna need some ribbon this is gonna just save us time when we're making the casing for the shoelaces first you want to attach the base so you take the base and one of the side edges the right sides together we're going to sew all the way across here. We're going to flip it across and then we're going to top stitch it down. Top stitch it down means so it's going to be like flat like this and we're going to do a line of stitching on the outs on the right side. So, I've done the seam here just like this and we want the seam to go sorry, the seam to go towards the center in in the bottom. This is the base, right? So it's going to be folded like this and we'll sew across. Crease here with like the inside of your presser foot, okay? It really depends on like the settings that you use, so. Now you can see this is the top stitch. I've attached the full sign, so once you finish sewing on the bottom piece, right, so you do the, you do the seam, right? You flip it to the other side, and see this is what top stitching is. You can see like this is the crease of the, sorry, this is the crease of the fabric and then you sew just on top, right? This reinforces it so it's a bit stronger, right? And also has a nice finished um, look. You go over here and you see obviously it's a little bit bigger, but you just sew. So we'll put this together. I'll do it like this so you can see. We'll put it like this. Sew in between the two stitches right there. Okay, after this is up again, then we'll top stitch this edge. Then we can start attaching the side. For the lining, you don't need to do any top stitching, so it'll be a bit faster, right? So you have the base, you sew on this side, sew on the other side, sew over here. And then what I did, see, look, it's forming a box shape now. Look, it's a box. So what you do, you take over the side, you line this up, right? And then you sew all the way top. And you continue this for the whole box, okay? But for the last opening, I'll show you for the last opening. Uh, don't sew that up yet. So it's all enclosed now. And I've sewn up all the sides as well. So it's like a full box, like it's a paper bag. 
for the last side seam, don't sew all the way across. We need to leave an opening here in order for us to flip it inside out. You just take the fabric, so I'll just open it up for you. So the two raw ends, we first we um, press them inside, so you just iron that. And then this doesn't really matter how you um, fold this up. Just like I folded it like this, and then like this. So I went like this. But eventually you just want it to um, close off all the seams. And then we're going to sew around here. A big rectangle around the edges, so then now our strap is nice and strong. You want to cut 13 and a half inches, and then both the ends, like they'll be folded down like this, and then we'll sew it on just like this. See, and then over here we'll have a little bit of the gap. So this one will be sewn on, like about here. So you have the gap for the drawstrings to come out. It's hidden like here. There's a hole here, so that later we can turn this inside out. So you want to iron like all the seams like, nice and flat. And same with the main body. Okay, so to make the casing for the um, sh uh, shoestring drawstrings, you get a piece of ribbon, right? I just folded over the end here and then just sewed this down. So what we're going to do on the skinny side, because we're going to have this, the main strap here, so you want to leave a space, right? Okay, so then you take it and don't sew it all the way at the top here because you need the seam allowance to flip the lining inside out. So you leave a bit of space and this will go all the way across all the way across here and then we're going to cut it right here and this will stop again here because you want both sides to be able to pull the drawstring. Okay so when you're sewing down this strap make sure you leave this end open right you might like make sure you don't like close this off end because then how are you going to thread the um the shoelaces in. So it's just sew down this end and then we're going to sew all the way to the end like this. Here make sure you backstitch well. Yeah, and then that's it. Now this is all done. Now you you, you put on the um, little casing here to put the shoestring. Now look, this is the right side. Got it? Like, it looks all pretty. And this one, you need to have it with the um, raw edges out. So you want the right side, it looks nice on the inside. Now what we're going to do, take this, take it, place it inside, inside here. Alright, shake it up. Now you have the two bags within each other. You're going to line this up, and we're going to sew all the petal leaves on, right? So we line this up. Once you sew all the petal leaves on, that's why it's important to leave that little hole. See, now we have this little hole, then we'll flip it inside out. So after you finish sewing it and you flipped it inside out, and it may take a little bit, you want to wiggle, wiggle, wiggle to make sure you get as pointy as possible. And then afterwards, you want to press this down. Then we're going to top stitch all the way, all the flower petals. So now I have the nice flower petals like this. Remember that hole that we used? Where is it? Right there. So now we're going to close this up like this. And we're just going to stitch right across here, okay? You want to make a box and then an X. In some places you have to go over twice, so it will look like this. But you want to make sure you sew the strap on the inside so that when you close the bag, the flower petals will stick out. Okay, so what you do, it's from this side. You want to make sure that it's in the center, so you take the strap. And so this is down the point right here. And you want to stop at about where the ribbon is. So you have to place it in and make sure that you're not going to sew over top of this because you have to open that. So you check the, uh, the spacing and lining up and then you can sew the box plus the egg and the strap. And make sure that when you sew on one side and then you go and sew on the other side that the strap is not twisted like this because that's really, really annoying. Like you're almost at the last, almost at the finish line, right? And then you have this all twisted and then you have to undo this and I really hate undoing. Um, stitch ripping is real pain so make sure that you double check this because a couple of times like if you're like really late and tired you might not notice and this will be end up twisted and you're almost finished and it's really disappointing okay so the next final step this is my favorite part so you take your shoelace and you get a safety pin and you thread this in all the way around okay you're gonna need to do two so this is gonna come all the way around and it's gonna come out this end and then you're going to do the same but starting on this side. So you have two, then you can just pull the finished bag. You thread it in so you want one to go all the way around like this. And at the end here, you just take them two together and tie them in. Oh, looks like bunny ears. Bunny ears, okay. Same with the other side, so that like that. So my favorite part, once you're done, I put a lunchbox inside. Um, ready, and pull! 
See, isn't this nice with the flower petals like this? See, now you can have a nice stylish bag to carry your lunch in. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and you learned something and you'll be able to make your own bag. Really awesome. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.